indie warriors and tentacle lovers, Peach here with I Dream of Indie to talk to you about Sucker for Love First Date. Before I get into the review, I want to take a moment to let you know that this game features themes of self-harm and suicide. In Sucker for Love, you're a man with one goal, to smooch an eldritch god. Instead of using a Necronomicon to summon Cthulhu, the character uses a pink book that is actually a dating guide for dating Lynetta or Cthulhu. These are a list of spells that are needed to complete the date. Things get more complicated in chapter 2 and 3 when more eldritch gods want to date you. There's also the knowledge that at the end of your date, your entire dimension will be destroyed. This doesn't bother the player though, as they care more about kissing than everyone around them, I guess. I think now's a good time to mention that I was afraid to play dating sims in high school because I thought my parents would walk in and see something compromising. This game definitely brought back those memories. <laughs> During your date, there's also the possibility of losing your sanity. I think the game handles this really well, as if you wash your face and look in the mirror, you see yourself covered in blood versus the image you saw before. The gameplay focuses on players dragging their mouse to complete spells, as well as some point and click mechanics that made the game feel more interactive than a lot of dating sims. The visuals have that cutesy style that a lot of dating sims go for with lots of pinks and pastel blues and yellows. It was really quite pleasing to look at. Each of the three dateable characters had their own style and color, and it was really nice to see how different they all were from each other. I especially liked Nye's style as it was Egyptian based. And no, I will not be trying to pronounce Nia's whole name, I'm not going to embarrass myself like that. I really enjoyed the soundtrack to this game. It had that cutesy upbeat music you expect in Dating Sims, and some spooky scary songs when the Lovecraftian part kicked in. I really liked the theme, and I liked the idea of a Lovecraftian dating sim, but I really did not like the love interest in this game. Lynetta was so cheerful, but she didn't have any depth. Even the moments when she was scary just kind of fell flat. I think Esther is very obnoxious and don't see the appeal. And while Nye's story was interesting, it was so short that I didn't feel like I knew the character. That does bring me to my next point. The game is really short. You can probably finish it in one sitting. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I wish I would have had time to get to know the characters better. Maybe then I would have liked them. In the end, it was a really cute game, but not one I see myself coming back to anytime soon. I am a cosmic entity beyond comprehension, so no amount of contact with me is safe for a human. Your mind could snap like a reed at any moment, actually. Oh, don't make that face. I can make it worth your while if you understand what I'm getting at. Thank you so much for watching. I want to give a special shout out to all our great indie warriors. Phil T, Christian Cruz, Kevalo, Mitchell Hall, Chris Jackson, Nathan Moore, Adriana Amato, CJR, C. Coyle, Skeptism, Haley, Julian Colbus, Jen Rose, Jesse, CPM, Bunny, JRS8, Raylan, Marky Mint, Dave Harp, Peekaboo, Lex Noyle, and Eric. If you're interested in becoming an indie warrior or learning more about I Dream of Indie, please check out the description box below. Thank you again for watching and have a great day.